All right, guys, I decided to do my video on the structure of the conduction system. The conduction system is the primary pacemaker and is the electrical system for the heart, pretty much. Uh, it's composed of a bunch of different cells. These cells are found within tissues of uh, the SA node, the internodal conduction pathways, AV node, the bundle of his, Purkinje fibers. And this, uh, this tissue is highly conductive and if it causes electrical activity in the heart, it's considered pacemaker tissue. And it sets the rate and the uh, cardiac contractions. So the primary pacemaker is the dominant pacemaker is considered the SA node or the sinoatrial node. It fires at a intrinsic rate between 60 and 100 times a minute. And it's between the junction of the superior vena cava and the right atrium. In most patients, the right coronary artery supplies it with blood. Next, we have the intermodal pathways. There's three of them. You have the anterior internodal pathway or the Bachmann bundle. It branches and forms a pathway between the SA and the AV nodes. The second is the middle internodal tract or the Winkybach tract and it is it's just that, it's the middle internodal tract. The thorial tract, or the third one, is the last and final internodal pathway, and it is the posterior pathway. Next we have the AV node, or the atrioventricular node. And it's a group of cells located on the floor of the right atrium behind the tricuspid valve. It's near the opening of the coronary sinus, and it's supplied for most people by the right coronary sin coronary artery. And some, some people it is supplied by the CX artery. When the impulse from the SA node enters the AV node, it is delayed slightly before it's sent throughout the rest of the conduction system. And this allows the atria to empty blood into the ventricles. About 70 to 80% of the blood is filled by gravity and the remaining 20 to 30 percent comes from atrial conduction or atrial kick. The AV junction which includes the AV node and surrounding tissue like the bundle of his can also be called the AV bundle. This conducts impulses from the AV junction to the right and left bundle branches. In a normal heart the AV junction can be thought of as a gatekeeper because it's the only connection between the atria and the ventricles. The uh, impulses do spread from the bundle branches to the Purkinje fibers. Now, the Purkinje fibers are a big network of, of cardiac muscle on the bottom of the heart that kind of wraps around and it's uh, distributed through the inner surfaces of the ventricular wall. It conducts electrical impulses from the bundle branches to the ventricular myocardium and contracts the heart. You also have secondary pacemakers. Those are your primary pacemakers we just went over. And uh, that's mainly if one of them's damaged, like the SA node's damaged or something, then the conduction system can act as a secondary pacemaker. So if your SA node's damaged, it'll go to your AV junction and then your Purkinje network. So we said the SA node beats at an intrinsic rate of 60 to 100 beats per minute. The, if that fails, the AV junction beats at 40 to 60 beats a minute. And if that fails, the Purkinje network beats at 20 to 40 beats a minute. And any accessory conduction pathways. Uh, some people have different heart muscles. Some are born with different heart tissue. And it'll, sometimes it connects the atria and the ventricles and bypasses the AV node. This is called an accessory pathway or a bypass tract. Uh, there's three of these, the James fibers, 
They're in the atrial internodal pathways and they extend to the ventricles while bypassing the AV node. The myham fibers in the AV node, the bundle of his, and the bundle branches, uh, they extend to the ventricles and provide a common pathway for re-entrant dysrhythmias. And then the last one finally is the bundle of Kent. And it's located between the left atrium and the left ventricle. It's sometimes on the right side. And it enables depolarization wave to bypass the AV node and trigger early depolarization of a section of ventricular tissue. This can also cause a unique change on an EKG called a delta wave and I'm sure we'll go over that in class too and that's it thanks for watching guys